Hey everyone, TTG here with another custom game. This is versus Charmander from Discord. Charmander reached out to me to uh, see if we could put together a match. I think um, he's looking to learn something. Uh, Charmander says he is silver as Axis, gold as allies. So that does put me as a bit of advantage because I usually place platinum as both. So it's going to be a fun match, um, but I maybe should expect to win. Let's take a look at what uh, Charmander did for his opening. He bought two tanks and four infantry. Standard build. Took West Russia. Huge loss in West Russia. Five infantry loss in West Russia. So let's see. He pushed through Ukraine. Nice move. Didn't lose that much. And uh, placed an egg on there. So the correct move certainly when this was weak. I should calculate to see if maybe I could take West Russia and give myself enough pressure to take Karelia with that five infantry loss. And he mobilized four infantry to Caucasus, two tanks to Russia, and he placed the infantry in St. King. So pretty standard move. Um, one difference I would do personally is I usually place an infantry in Buryatia to lure Japan, but certainly that's uh, just a preference thing and can go either way. So I am going to do the uh, battleship to sea zone 13 opening that I've been playing lately. And uh, so for my build for Germany, I'm going to play the aggressive bomber build, two artillery, seven infantry. And uh, what I'm going to do is place this battleship over here on Sea Zone 13. And I'm going to place six attackers, not the transport, six attackers on Sea Zone 7. So this is going to make a nice, clean, powerful Sea Zone 7 attack. Um, hopefully a surviving transport sitting in the Baltic. And a battleship sitting off the coast of UK, which means that this destroyer here has to be committed against the battleship um, if he wants to destroy it without having serious loss of planes. Um, and the effect is basically in order to deter a sea lion, he has to put himself in a position where he can't build a fleet in UK once. So that's the idea behind this particular opening move. It's not actually a sea lion attempt. It's kind of a sea lion threat. You can think of it like in chess, you know, when you fork the king and a knight and they have to defend the king so they lose the knight, that kind of thing. Um, we're just, you know, threatening UK with the goal of actually um, not actually capturing their capital, but instead um, preventing their fleet from building. Um, I really would have liked to use some air on the eastern borders here against USSR, but of course he's placed his AA guns really effectively, so I'm going to have to think twice about whether I want to do that. Um, oh, one tip when doing this, you want to capture Gibraltar as well with one inf. Um, limits the, the US landing zones. Um, if you look at this, the U.S. fighter can go actually one, two, three, and land in Gibraltar. So if you take Gibraltar, you prevent the fighter from joining the battle. So if he chooses to kill the battleship with the Americans and send the British up to kill Season 7, um, he risks doing it, of course, with only a destroyer and a bomber because the fighter has nowhere to land and can't reach the battle. So um, by taking Gibraltar, you prevent the U.S. fighter from getting involved and force the British to make that hard choice. So I was like giving my opponents bad decisions, so this is a great way of doing that. We'll throw this at Charmander and see how he can handle it. Um, my other thought about this weak West Russia is I could just stack Corellia, and you know he wouldn't have the power to take it back. He's got 7 here, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 that can reach here. Um, if I do something like, say, I take these tanks out with ground units then um, he's still going to have the 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, versus I think probably my 13, like if I send this guy and this guy, and I take it like this, um, that's 13 versus 13, and I'm kind of tank heavy, so I don't think Russia can actually handle that. So let's, that's, that's fine by me. I'm going to take this thing with 5. If I get a nice strafe, I might retreat. I'm um, not going to send the fighter. We'll have all the fighters pile up here in Northwest Europe to join up with the bomber and the submarines to create that threat that I was talking about. And I think that's good. I think alternatively, if I were to attack this, I would be able to bring um, this one tank and this one tank. That's two tanks and three. That's only five ground units plus maybe like three planes. It's like eight guys versus eight. That's not really the kind of trade, potentially coming into a KGF, that's not really the kind of the trade I want to be involved in with an AA gun involved. So I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to stack up here, and he doesn't have, because of the five infantry loss, he doesn't have the capability to put the pressure on Corelli he needs. So I'm going to hold that from G1. Okay, six there, two there. Everything looks good. End phase. Go after the, uh, the cruiser. Bam. No match for my battleship. 
And C's on seven. He missed. I missed. All the subs missed. All right, I lost a sub there. Add another one there. That's kind of a shame. I lost all my subs. All right. Hmm. I'm going to keep the cruiser alive. I want to punish him more with planes. He does have a destroyer, so keeping the subs on defense against destroyer are so terrible. Um, would have liked to have one or two subs left alive there. <laughs> got the AA gun. Let's do this another round. I would like to get those tanks, at least one of them. I got one. All right, he got one. So at this point, I'm definitely going to retreat. I'm not going to sacrifice nine and six is like 15, four, six, plus a two territory is eight. So I am out of here. Um, it's not much of a profit on that, but uh, I'll take it. And then we will uh, have to hold the line further back. So he's going to get the income from Ukraine for a little bit longer, but the efficiency is too good to turn down. Um, let's see here. One, two, three. Bring more tanks into here. AA guns to northwest. We'll stack up all these guys in Algeria, allowing me to basically attack a stack of places on either side. This is really a defensive position. I'm not creating much of a threat here. I'm kind of just saying, hey, I'm going to hold Algeria for a little longer, and you can't push me out just yet. Okay, is everything else in position? I check my defense profiles. Don't want to uh, be sacrificing bombers anymore. And I've changed my Japanese starting defense profile with the subs retreat so that carriers die first because of this battle. I have a lot of UK players attacking season seven lately, and um, the odds on it when you have carriers die last are too bad. So I'm uh, Definitely having the subs retreat with the carriers die first as my opening. The subs retreat, of course, is to defend this guy, and the carriers retreat is to, to help this battle go better. Um, a lot of UK players getting lucky on this season 37. I'm kind of scarred after that battle scotch match, which I know a lot of you guys watched as well. Okay, that's all set up in phase, and we mobilize. And back to you, Charmander. Okay, Charmander has moved, and it's time for Japan's turn one. Uh, let's take a look at what he did. He decided not to build a fleet. Smart man, two fighters, some ground units for India. He took out the transport battleship with no losses. Would have liked to maybe at least killed something with that battleship. He picked off my destroyer and transport. Also lost nothing there, so I got a bit of cleanup to do. He mobilized the United Kingdom, India. What else did he do here? He's pulled his transport back with the American fleet. He's brought his infantry forward to Canada, eastern Canada. He's connected up his other guy from the Mediterranean to the east to the Indian Ocean to the East Mediterranean. So he's balled up a little bit of a fleet here. It's kind of interesting. And he's landed his fighter in Sinkiang, so that's out of the question. Szechuan, sorry, any kind of capture in Szechuan's out of the question. He left me alone in season 37. It's always nice to see. I always hate it when people do these big attacks against Season 37, especially when they get lucky and win. Um, so as Japan, I think maybe just a standard three transports, three infantry. No reason to go any different. Um, I'll try and grab what land we can, and I think I'm going to go after the uh, uh, Pearl Light attack. So I'll send my five guys over there. He's left Bariashi alone, so I'm going to grab that for free. And other than that, we'll do the big Yunnan stack. Um, really a lot of spare fighters. Because he has nothing on Burma and nothing on Buryatia, I kind of have extra fighters to send everywhere. So that um, Anwe is now 6-2. and two. Couldn't get any easier. Uh, I'm going to send my battleship up to attack this guy. Leave the carriers flexible. And... Let's see here, maybe we'll do the artillery from Philippines into Yunnan as well. This is pretty much a shoe in I would like to maybe send one more guy. Let's do the battleship. Two battleships will be a pretty easy, clean kill. I mean, he'd have to get three hits to kill anything, and they would be a fighter before he's hit by two fighters and two battleships. So I would say that's a pretty safe battle. Since I have the luxury of having too many units to spread around, might as well make my battles as perfect as I can. 
Okay, let's check out the Season 61. Perfect. Nothing. Didn't even get a hit. Okay. Yunnan. He got a hit on me. Two hits. Bastard. Okay. Um, season 53. Do not forget to take the fighter as a casualty. Okay, that's a nice round of hits. Okay. Um, we'll take the fighter first. I don't lose my chance to do it. I'm going to keep pressing this thing. I'm willing to give up the cruiser for the fighter, so... Yeah, there it goes. It's kind of doomed anyway. Onway. Lost one if. All right. That's not bad. I'm going to land these guys back here, where I usually do, on uh, whatever this island is. Okay. Bring my... Um, Carrier's back. What? Why can't I bring in the other fighter? Oh, he's just out of range. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. I'll just put him here. Manchuria. Mm, maybe I'll do that a little bit differently. Maybe I'll I'll put the um, one of my carriers here. That's not so bad. Two battleships here, so I don't actually need two carriers there as well. I just like to have my fighters in a little, you know, spread out position so that I can target whatever he does next round. So far, it's all pretty meta. Um, nothing too weird from uh, Charmander. All the weird moves have been by me. I have to see what US USA does now because it's the big turning point where they get to pick, you know, are we doing KGF or KJF? I think um, if I were him, I would just do a KGF in this scenario. Um, you know... This fleet here is not bad. I think, you know, given how Season 7 went so badly for me, you know, he could bring in, like, the USA Bomber to pick off this cruiser. And then the USSR could kill off this transport with their fighters. And that would leave them uh, with a nice clean slate for the UK. I probably am going to kill this destroyer if I think he can build a fleet. So I've got that going for me. But, you know, I've got six attackers only. So he would have to build... Um, if he built, you know, a carrier and two destroyers, that'd be maybe enough because he's got this destroyer. I'll have to see. I think if he really wants to do a fleet, he can make it work, but he might decide it's too expensive. Oh, well. Over to you, Charmander.